Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. So I'm very excited to check out Pioneer Days from Tasty Minstrel Games. This is for two to four players, take about 45 to 75 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 plus. And in Pioneer Days, you're going to be playing a pioneer who's going to have his own different asymmetrical abilities. He's going to get a wagon, and they're going to go set off getting cattle, recruiting different people, going into town, completing missions, going mining for gold, doing a variety of different pioneery stuff. But it's not going to be that easy because there's going to be rains, there's going to be famines, there's going to be diseases and storms and other bad things you are going to have to deal with. You're going to play over the course of four weeks, a.k.a. going through a dice bag four times in this action selection games from tasty menstrual games who puts out a lot of great games they even sponsor my channel which means they really don't have that good of a taste but luckily they have good taste in games does this continue that trend let's open it up i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of pioneer days so first and foremost we have a handy dandy rule booklet eight pages double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples incredibly well done should have you up and running in no time at all huge thumbs up on the rule booklet so in pioneer days what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be taking control of a pioneer there will be eight different pioneers that you will be able to choose from and each of these pioneers is going to have their own unique starting resources and their own unique special abilities assuming you're playing with the more advanced version of the game which if you're familiar with most hobby games i would immediately start with you are going to collect victory points by recruiting different members to your team who you are going to have to keep healthy by giving them medicine when bad stuff happens, uh, by mining for gold, by reaching into this bag, by going from town to town and trying to complete their little missions here at the end of the week. There will be a variety of different ways you can get victory points and we'll go over those a little bit later. So let's go into the components then we'll get into the gameplay so first and foremost everyone is going to get their own unique character here they're all double-sided with the one side just being the standard pioneer and the standard pioneers are all the same on the back though everyone's going to have a cool special ability each of your wagon spaces can hold three wood three medicine in any combination normally they can only hold two uh, michelle the tinkerer before triggering equipment you may change your die to the face of your choice if you do you must choose income for your turn action each round if you satisfy the needs of at least one town card gain one extra favor favor is just two victory points so as you can see each one of these really does have a pretty diverse different ability and they will kind of impact how you play the game sometimes which is really stinking nice so we'll just start with this guy right here we got crow eyed merle at the beginning of each round you may discard two cattle to take any available townsfolk now cattle are over here these are going to be an interesting source of victory points we'll talk about later but that's his special ability right there he also is going to start with a large wagon so you'd hook this right here and you put it down in front of you he's going to get one wood to start off with and you're going to need wood in order to score victory points potentially at the end of the game if you have uh, the right townsfolk but more importantly uh, there will be storms and if you do not have wood to fix your wagons then the storms will really hurt you and uh, it's, it's bad 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 news We'll talk about that later. He's also going to start with one medicine right here. And this is going to make it so that one of his town's folk does not die when, uh, what is it, the disease hits. He's going to start with two cattle. Now, the cattle are interesting because the cattle are going to give you points persistently throughout the game. At the end of each phase, and there's going to be four phases, four weeks, you're going to get points for all the cattle you have. So having cattle is a great way to get points. And then you're going to start with three coins and you're going to use coins for a couple different things which we'll talk about later so everybody's going to start with their own unique characters and then when you're ready to go you are going to start up the game so this right now i have a four player game set up which means i'm going to have five pieces of equipment over here and the equipment's really stinking cool we'll talk about it later you're going to have all your different uh pioneers that you can potentially bring onto your crew down here and as you can see there are a lot of these different pioneers down here lots of variability going on in this game and in fact you're only supposed to use uh two different letters then mix them up uh, I don't know why you only do that, but still, you're still going to have plenty of stuff going on here. Over here we have the player board, which is just going to keep track of your score, and you're also going to place the dice that have been rolled over here, which will make more sense in a second. And other than that, I think we're good to go. So let's show you how a mock turn is going to go. So the first player, who will have this cool little horseshoe right here, is going to reach into the dice bag. Yeah, you haven't even seen a dice bag because there's so much stuff in this game. And they're going to pull out as many dice as there are players, plus one. So I'm pretending it's a five-player game. We're going to pull out 
five dice. Excuse me, a four-player game. So there we go. I have five dice right here. We're going to roll them up, and then we're going to take turn drafting the dice. Now, before we get started drafting the dice, I want to go over the different die faces on... You know what? I'm not actually going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and draft the dice, and I'll show you what you can do with the dice. When you select a die, you're going to have three different things you can do with it. The first thing you can do is you can take silver and just trade in your die for silver. And how much silver you get is right down here. So if you trade in medicine, you're going to get six bucks. If you trade in wood, you're going to get five bucks. Pretty simple stuff right there. And you'll need the money for a variety of different things later. The next option you have is you can take the action on the die. And there are a couple different actions down here. So the first action that you can do is you can go mining. If you go mining, that means you're going to reach into this bag and you are going to try to draw out some gold. Now you do have to store the gold onto your uh, onto your your wagon over there. But that's a great way to get victory points because at the end of the game gold is going to be worth victory points the next one you'll see is equipment and equipment means you're going to take one of these equipment cards uh, one of these equipment tiles down here and you're going to put it onto your wagon and the equipment does a wide variety of diverse things as you'll see right here so the first thing uh one of your townsfolk is immune to disease draw an additional gold token to choose from recruit adjacent townsfolk two cattle are immune to famine gain three silver after each raid your wagon is immune to storm so if you got that one you never have to worry about the storm ever again two silver when taking income plus two silver uh when when the symbol comes up and that's another interesting aspect of this is there are, there are um, there's symbols in the upper left-hand corner, as you can see right here. And whenever you draft one of those dice, you are immediately going to gain the thing right there. So, for instance, if I had this on my wagon and I decided to take a wood, then I would immediately get one gold token. So, and yes, you can stack these up. So if I had three separate things with a piece of wood in the upper left-hand corner, I might get, you know, one gold token, one wood, and one medicine. And you can really stack those up, and it can be incredibly powerful when you choose to do it. But that is the equip action right there. Next, you have the cattle action right here. Very, very simple. You're going to take one cattle, and boom. This does not take up a space on your, um, on your thing. It just kind of goes up here, which is kind of nice. And that's going to be victory points, persistent victory points through the game. Uh, wood, same thing, you're just going to take a wood, and medicine, same thing, you are just going to take a medicine. So you can either trade in your die to get money, you can trade in your die to take an action. And oh yeah, there is a wild action right here. If you take the wild action, you can do any of the actions you want out on the board. The last action that you can do with your dice is you can recruit one of these people to your wagon. And each of these people will have both a special ability and also a persistent way you're going to get points at the end of the game. So let's take a look at this, this lady right here, the wagon builder. So how it works is you may buy one large wagon for one wood. So that's really good special ability right there. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that there is a bell right there. Uh, the bell means it's an immediate effect. So I can't do this over and over and over again. It means that just this one time I can trade in one wood for one large wagon, which would normally cost eight bucks. So it's great. Also, at the end of the game, she's going to give you one victory point per small wagon and two victory points per large wagon. And those can stack. So you might have like three cards that are giving you points for your wagons, which in that case, you're just all about buying these wagons right up here because that's one of the ways that you can spend your money. Another way you can spend your money is that you can spend, I believe it is, three coins to change the face of, your, uh, of a die. So let's say you draft a die, you don't like it, you can change the face of it to whatever you want, but you do not get to trigger these special abilities right here so in that one scenario where i had three pieces uh three equipment with wood in the upper left hand corner uh, i would not get all of those special things right there so that's what you're going to be doing on your turn everyone's going to draft a die now you'll notice there's five die and there's four players and you're like well how does that work won't there be a dice left over and the answer is yes there will be a dice left over over and what happens now is when that dice is left over you are going to move the track right here over one for whatever is left over so since a green is left over it would move over one now eventually and quite frequently sometimes through, throughout the game these are going to trigger uh, because once it gets all the way over here you're either going to get storms or raid famine disease and how do those works when you hit storm you must pay one wood for each wagon you have or place a damage token on one of your wagons and that is really bad it's really bad because it locks up two spaces of your wagon but also because it's negative two victory points which really stinks the raid you must lose 
to lose half of your silver, which is a bummer, especially if you have a lot of money. So you have to be forward planning for that. The famine, you must pay one silver for each cattle. Uh, you cannot pay or discard it. So, for instance, if I had, say, you know, six cattle or something crazy like that, and I only have four bucks, that means two of my cattle are going to die. So while cattle are a great way to get points, you do have to pay to keep them upright. And last but not least, you have disease, which, you guessed it, is going to take medicine. You're going to have to pay one medicine for each town's folks you have. Those that you cannot pay for, they're dead, and you lose them per permanently. Uh, so last but not least, you'll see there's green, yellow, red, and blue, and there's also a black die. You're like, well, what happens if a black die is left over? Well, all hell breaks loose because everything goes forward one when a black dice is left over. Now, this is a really interesting aspect of the game because if you are prepared for all of the disasters, then you might be like, well, there's a blue one right here and a black one right here, and you know what? I'm kind of good right now. So you know what? I'm actually going to draft the blue and just leave the black. So there is uh, a really big element. The disaster track plays a big element to the game. Anywho, you are going to continue to do this, and the next player will pass over, and they'll draw, draw five dice out of the bag, they'll roll them up, and you're going to rinse, wash, and repeat doing this. The other thing I want to mention is that these do not get replenished, and these do not get replenished until the dice bag is empty. Once the dice bag is empty, you'll finish out that round, and then you will head to town. And this is where you can gain favors. And so the favors are up here. There's going to be different favors each one. This says one large wagon or two small wagons. If you're willing to turn those in, you're going to get two favors. This one, if you turn in one wood and four silver, you're going to gain two favors. This is a great way to get favors, a.k.a victory points. You will know the game is over because eventually you will get to the bottom of this pile and as you can see there's a lot of cards here. That's because you're not supposed to use all of the cards. The final town will actually have three favors so you'll be able to gain potentially a lot of points for trading in your stuff. Once you run out of these cards and uh, do all your victory points you're going to tally up your victory points. In the end of the game you are going to get victory points uh, for your cattle. You'll have a lot of victory points persistently. Oh, that's what I should probably tell you. At the end of a week, how do you score victory points? Well, you're going to score victory points for everything they have down here. Sometimes you'll it'll say if you do something, you will get the victory points. So if you are able to successfully do it, you'll get the victory points on the card. Because as I mentioned, lots of different cards going on in here. Next, you're going to get one victory point for each cattle that you have that is alive. Because obviously nobody cares about dead cattle. Uh, and then you're going to satisfy the favors right here, and you're going to gain favors. Then you will replenish everything. All these cards will go away. All the equipment that was not purchased will go away. You'll replenish it. You'll rinse, wash, and repeat. And whoever has the most points at the end of four weeks will be the winner of Pioneer Days. Alrighty then, Pioneer Days from Tasty Minstrel Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Two to four players aren't restricted player count. That's actually one of the main cons I have with this game. Which is saying a lot about the game itself, so I'm going to tell you that it's fantastic and amazing, but if it was up to five players, I'd probably give it a Bowers Best Seal, but we'll talk more about that later. Uh, another comment after the game, components, the components are fantastic, except for the card text on the cards. It's really, really tiny, and I don't understand why they made it so tiny. It's annoying. The text needed to be bigger on the cards. You know, another comment out of this game that I didn't really see anybody complain about, but still is something that I did want to mention, is that when it really boils down to it, it is a pretty repetitive and tedious game. You're going to roll dice, draft a dice, pick an action. Roll dice, draft a dice, pick the action. Roll dice, draft dice, pick the action. Roll dice, draft dice, pick the action. That's all you're going to do over and over and over again, which might turn off some people. I haven't met any of those people, but hey, could. Another comment out of this game is that it can give you some analysis prowess and i did actually see this especially towards the end of the game when people are like all right what is the optimal decision here to make sure i'm getting the most points and the reason why and possibly why i would recommend this as a gateway game despite the fact that it is you know nuts and bolts a very simple game i taught it to two 11 year old girls they really enjoyed it is that there's just so much stuff to take in consideration so it's just simple it's just like draft a dice right well then it's like wait 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 well, I need wood because we're close on the storm track, but at the same time, I need money because I have four cattles and two dollars, and I really don't want to lose those those cattles because those cattles are going to give me two points. They're going to be two points every round, but at the same time, you know, I need to focus on, oh, wait, well, I could get this piece of equipment over here because if I get this piece of equipment that's still left over here, this might sync up with my other piece of equipment or it might protect me from getting robbed, so then I wouldn't even have to worry about getting robbed, and there's 
there's like there's just so much to take in with this game with the disaster track and with the different piece of equipment with the equipment with the special abilities and your persistent special ability and how you you can use the different dice and the the, the favors like the what the town wants you to do there's a lot to take in in this game and that can lead to someone else browse for some people not everybody i personally didn't get it but some people and i saw it firsthand can get it with the game any other cons I have with the game? No. Moving on to the pros. Uh, Pioneer Days is fantastic. It will immediately go into my collection. It is my second favorite Tasty Minstrel game ever behind only Orleans, which is, uh, I think it's like my top 10 favorite games of all time. And man, there is a lot to like in this game. All that stuff that I was saying that can lead to analysis paralysis is exactly why I love this game. There is just so much there's so many interesting choices to make and so many different ways you can carve your path to victory. Maybe you just want to go hard on the cattle, which means you need to focus on getting that money so you can do that. Or maybe you just want to go hard on the cards, or maybe you want to go hard on getting a lot of wagons, or maybe you want to go hard on mining, so you're going to get these cards that will sync up well with mining, or maybe you're just going to get a whole bunch of equipment that will really help you out and also will allow you to be gaining all this other extra stuff, which means you don't have to worry about the storms or the rains or the famine or the disease. There's just different paths to victory in the game, which I really like. But not only that, there's different, there's variability because there's lots of different cards you're going to be able to mix in there and they will be different. This is the kind of game where I love it because each and every time I play the game, I can and will just try a different strategy just to see how it works. Now, that being said, and this is another thing that would be on the con side, there is a good deal of luck with this game, especially with the dice rolling. If you happen to roll just five pieces of equipment on the first turn, guess what? You're taking equipment or you're paying money or you're only getting a couple bucks. Uh, so there is dice rolling there. There is which equipment comes up at which time. If you happen to be the first player when everything refreshes and there's just a piece of equipment that perfectly works for you, I mean, there is some luck in that. But I didn't mind it. I didn't think it was an overly lucky game. I mean, it still feels like whoever wins the game earns the win for the game. Component-wise, components are top-notch. The rules are top-notch aside from that super small text, which is annoying. Dice, first player marker, Everything looks good. You got the little player board in front of you, which is really stinking useful. Even though I will say it takes you a little bit to wrap your brain around the concept of, oh, when I draft this dice, I gain this thing, which is cool. But there's a good deal of forward planning. I love the disaster track. And I love when you're prepared for the disaster track. I mentioned this little part, but that's my favorite is when you're like looking down at your stuff and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I got no money. I got no cattle. I got plenty of wood, plenty of medicine. What the hell? Let's just leave a black there. And, and I really do like that aspect. I forgot to mention the middle part, but I also like at the end of the game, everything advances one as well, which can trigger bad stuff. So you need to be planning just for that. Because a lot of times, you know, with a lot of games and a lot of Euro games specifically, when it gets to that last round, it's just like, I'm going balls to the wall, victory points. But with this one, you still have to be factoring in the fact that the everything on the disaster track is going to go up one. And I do like that. I like the theme. I like the components. I love the game. And in the end, Pioneer Days is a fantastic... Did I fly? It's a fantastic family game that I can recommend, especially if the kids 11 plus. It's a fantastic game night game i liked it at all the different player counts even though i will say i liked it best at four players i still enjoyed it as a two and a three player game as well that is pioneer days from tasty minstrel games do not let this one fly under your radar one of my favorite games to come out this year that is pioneer days from tasty minstrel games if you enjoyed this for you please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know would you like to be a pioneer going into the old west and you know exploring and settling me personally, hell no. Hell no. Native Americans trying to kill you. There's terrible, terrible diseases. Rightfully so, by the way, while they're trying to kill you. You know, there's terrible diseases. There's wild animals. There, you know, there's, there's no central AC. I mean, just no. No thank you. No thank you for being a pioneer. But let me know in the comments below. Would you like to be a pioneer? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.